Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shi Zun. Chapter 264 Tianyin Pavilion, The Emperor is Like Him In the other life, the former master and disciple eventually turned against each other. It was a grand battle of the highest pinnacle. In the end, Chu Wanning lost to Mo Ran because of his weak spiritual core while Mo Ran was young and fierce. Don't struggle anymore. The more the young demon fought, the stronger his spirit roared. He grinned wantonly as he blocked Huaisha. The weapons clashed. Golden sparks would flash and dimmed intermittently. Chu Wanning's eyes were filled with fire. Mo Ran glanced at Chu Wanning's pale face and then turned to look at the gradually dissipating spiritual power in Huaisha. His eyes were full of ridicule. You have no spiritual power left. If you continue to fight with me, your spiritual core will shatter. Shizun, you are so proud. You won't be willing to be a normal mortal even if you die, right? Chu Wanning gritted his teeth and did not answer. His thin lips were bloodless. In the end, the glint of Huaisha completely disappeared. Mo Ran then knew that Chu Wanning's spiritual power had been exhausted. He laughed heartily, his voice sounding like a vulture. What else can you use to resist me? You hang of the night sky, my high and mighty Shizun? Chu Wanning half knelt on the ground, leaning on his sword, his white clothes stained with blood. He raised his eyes. At that time, Mo Ran's hatred was too deep. He could only see the determination in the other's eyes but could not see the sadness buried deep under that determination. Many years later, when Taxian Jun took poison to commit suicide, he unconsciously recalled that battle. He could not help but think that at that time, Chu Wanning did indeed have the determination to stop him even at the cost of his life. He would go to the ends for the sake of all living beings. He had once called him a vile character who only knew how to say nice words. In contrast, Chu Wanning was a man of his word. Be kind. His she's unsaid. Don't be wicked. Golden light flashed. Mo Ran only had time to see the last bit of calmness in Chu Wanning's eyes before he saw the blazing light in his palm. This Baidu immortal, this man who had no family or friends in the cultivation world, had sacrificed his own spiritual core to summon the three holy weapons once again. Juga. Tianwen. Huisha. With Chu Wanning's unyielding character, just how much power was in his spiritual core? The mighty army created by Mo Ran was finally suppressed by the power of Chu Wanning's spiritual core. One by one, the black and white chess pieces were crushed into dust by the radiance of that spiritual core. Strangely enough, at that time, Mo Ran was standing right in front of Chu Wanning, just inches away. He looked at this stubborn man who was putting in so much effort, but didn't do anything to stop him. Just like that, he watched with some trepidation and curiosity. He wanted to know to what extent this person would go for the so-called living beings that he cared so much about. He watched as Chu Wanning exhausted the last bit of his spiritual power. The turbulent river tide calmed down, and the sparrows that covered the sun dispersed. The living people under the control of the Zhenlong chess formation regained their consciousness while the dead ones closed their eyes again and fell into their eternal sleep. Mo Ran just looked on like that. He saw how the spiritual core of Yu Heng of the night sky shattered, saw Chu Wanning's brilliance fall, saw his own master kneel in front of him and finally fell into the dust. At that time, Mo Ran's face was expressionless. His face was slightly tilted and by his ears, he could faintly hear the murmur of his mother before she died. That kind-hearted woman stroked his cheek and said to him, Repay kindness, don't seek revenge. After so many years, he heard such a familiar sentence again. Before Chu Wanning sacrificed his own spiritual core, he said to him, Be kind. Don't be wicked. But he didn't do it. There seemed to be an endless resentment in his heart that only by shedding blood could get him a moment of respite. He destroyed Shi Shang Peak, slaughtered the Rufeng sect, killed tens of millions of cultivators, killed several sect leaders, dyed the Wangmu Lake red and filled the Kunlun Mountain with bones. In the end, 
when the insurgents surrounded Shi Shang Peak, he stood in front of the sky reaching pagoda. He experienced all these things himself and those monstrous crimes were all committed by him. In the shocking tragedy, he was the creditor and his hands were stained with the blood of more than a thousand people. He was responsible for this Zhenlong chess formation that took the lives of more than 10,000 people. It was all him. Mo Ran felt dazed, unable to catch his breath. Suddenly, he heard a muffled groan, which pulled him out of the mire of memories. He came back to his senses and saw that Mu Yanli's shoulder was pierced by a chess piece and blood splashed on his face. Pavilion Master Pavilion Master, be careful. The people of the Tianyan Pavilion immediately rushed forward to protect Mu Yanli. Mu Yanli took a breath, gritted her teeth and said, I'm all right. The Zhenlong chess piece who had attacked her had a mask covering his face. This chess piece then knelt in front of Mo Ran, lowered his head and said, This one failed to protect Master. This one deserved to die. Everyone was horrified. These chess pieces are being controlled by Mo Ran. He called him Master. Mo Ran said, No, no. But who would believe him? Who would believe him? Mo Ran shook his head in despair and retreated. He looked at the faces that were all full of hatred and doubt. It's not like that. He looked at Shui Meng, but Shui Meng was too far away to notice this commotion. Then, he saw Madame Wang and Shui Zhen Yang. The two of them saw what transpired and their expressions were extremely ugly. Mo Ran's lips moved as if he wanted to say something, but he didn't know what to say. Suddenly, he saw a group of chess pieces rush out from behind Madame Wang. In a flash, he shouted, Auntie! Be careful! This shout shocked everyone and Shui Zhenyang immediately became alert. However, because of the chess pieces around him, it was too late to turn around. Auntie. Mother. Bang. There was a crisp sound of metal. It was Zhang Shi who rushed out of the crowd. His Sui Huang sword energy repelled the chess pieces closing in on Madame Wang. Madame Wang said in shock, Shi Di. Zhang Shi glanced back at her coldly and said, Open your eyes. At this moment, Master Xianjing suddenly saw a dark cloud in the sky approaching Shi Shang Peak. At first he couldn't see it clearly but once he did, he couldn't believe his eyes. When many people in the surroundings noticed the rolling black cloud, he finally confirmed it. He blew his beard and shouted, How is it possible? How many chess pieces are there? The black chess pieces rolled like tides and there was no end of them in sight. Some were dead and some were alive. These people's faces were burned by some kind of a spell and their tongues were pulled out. Even if they recovered their consciousness, they wouldn't be able to speak. Behind them, there were flying beasts, dogs, and snakes being controlled by the Zhenlong chess formation. Mo Wiyu. Mo Ran. At this moment, these people looked back at him, but they were more afraid than angry. Some people who were approaching him couldn't help but take a few steps back. Mad. Mo Ran, are you mad? How many chess pieces did you make? Mo Ran opened his mouth. He wanted to say, it's not me, it's not me. But if it wasn't him, who else could it be? The gate of time and space, life and death opened again and Taxian Jun led millions of his soldiers upon this world. What was the difference between him and Taxian Jun? They had the same memory and used the same techniques. Grand Master Mo was also proficient in the Zhenlong chess formation that Taxian Jun practices. If these chess pieces were not specifically ordered, it would also recognize Grand Master Mo as their master. He had killed his family and trained in the forbidden techniques in order to form an army of thousands with such mere gesture as if he was scattering beans. He had overturned the world and make all living beings suffer. All of these were his doings. No one had wronged him. More and more chess pieces pressed in and there seemed to be no end to them. They were like black ink spreading rapidly on a rice paper, getting closer and closer. Some people were already panicking. What should we do? Mu Yanli said angrily, 
Mo ran. What excuses do you have? You planned all of this. I only regret that the Tianyan Pavilion didn't intervene earlier and kill you. Dark clouds covered the sun, turning the sky dark. The mountains were bleak and desolate. These tens of thousands of dead chess pieces were like giant bells hanging in the sky and would crash to the ground at any time, shattering all corners of the world, making lives as insignificant as ants. Moran's pupils contracted as he looked at the sky. The people didn't want to be captured without a fight and they either flew on their swords or got close to the chess pieces. This time, the battle was much more intense than before, and there was blood and screams everywhere. Heads were rolling. Intestines were flowing out. But there was still an endless black tide surging in from the horizon. They just kept on coming, making people's hair stand on end. Suddenly, they heard Shuemeng's shout in the distance. Father. Mother. Mo Ran quickly turned around and saw that Shue Zhenyong and Zhang Shi were both covered in blood. The bright red blood splattered everywhere, and it was hard to tell whether it was from their own injuries or from killing the enemies. Shue Meng tried his best to squeeze his way to his parents, but he was outnumbered. Shue Meng. Mo Ran wanted to help him, but Shue Meng looked very conflicted when he saw him. Shue Meng was avoiding him. Suddenly, a dead disciple of Rufeng sect raised his sword and stabbed Shue Meng in the shoulder. Blood immediately flowed out, staining his light armor. Shue Meng. Shue Meng. Mo Ran anxiously squeezed his way to him, but there were too many people in the commotion and the distance between them was too great. He couldn't get through. He couldn't get through. After being injured, more chess pieces rushed towards Shue Meng. The young man's figure was quickly swallowed by a group of red-eyed puppets. Meng Air. Meng Air. Miserable screams. It was Madame Wang's and Shue Zhenjiang's voices. Mo Ran had never heard such screams that made his muscles and bones shatter. His scalp was numb. Shue Meng. No. It shouldn't be like this. There must be a way, there must be a way. Since Hua Binan asked him to come here and set up this situation, it definitely wasn't to let him see Shi Sheng Peak sect being destroyed. What did Hua Binan wanted to do? What did he want him to do? What did Hua Binan want him to do? What was the purpose of this surprise? How could he end all of this, how could he stop this? Suddenly. He realized it and finally understood. Mo Ran was stunned for a moment and then his heart pounded. He finally understood. Hua Binan was ruthless. Not only did he want him to lose his reputation, he also wanted him to have no way to turn back. He understood. Nang Gong Si had done this on Mount Chiao. Chu Wanning had done this in their other life. He didn't have any spiritual energy now, but his spirit core was still there. He could feel its brilliance flowing in his chest, rising and falling together with his heartbeat. In his previous life, Taxian Jun's sinister and mad sneer seemed to appear in front of him again. You have no spiritual power left. If you continue to fight with me, your spiritual core will shatter. Shizun, you are so proud. You won't be willing to be a normal mortal even if you die, right? He knew what he had to do. Mo Ran's eyes were filled with tears as the flames of war raged in his heart. However, he suddenly calmed down. In the other life, Chu Wanning had sacrificed himself. He had told him that all living things are important and showed him how he abide by this belief. He seemed to see the pale face of Chu Wanning in his other life before he had sacrificed his spiritual core. At that time, his Shizun thought that he would definitely die and tried to leave him the following last words, Be kind. Don't be wicked. The earth rumbled. What happened? What's going on? Everyone was stunned. They dodged while searching for the source of this new development. In fact, there was no need to search. At the place where Mo Ran was standing, a blazing flame suddenly burst out it was not a real flame, but a powerful spiritual current created when a spiritual core of fire attribute was overheating, wrapping Mo Ran entirely within. 
Mo Wiiu. The taxi and Jun in the other life is a grand master in this life. He, in front of the great calamity, he actually, actually trying to put a stop to all of this. He shattered his own spiritual core. Like Nangong Si, like Chu Wanning, the shattering of his spiritual core allowed him to suddenly obtain the greatest amount of spiritual energy in an instant. His eyes were dyed red by the flames but there was not much pain on his handsome face. Who was he at this moment? He just don't want to be the Taxian Jun who was being cursed by thousands of people. If possible, he wanted to be like Chu Wanning. The spiritual core slowly shattered and melted in his chest. The flames burned brighter and brighter, piercing through the clouds and mist, illuminating the heavens. At this moment, he suddenly felt that the pure and innocent dreams of his childhood were slowly surging from the bottom of his heart. He stood in the flames. He saw Duan Yuhan, saw Chu Wanning. He saw her touching his cheek in that woodshed and saying, You have to repay kindness, don't hold grudges. He saw the young man outside Wuabei Temple holding the rice porridge and carefully feeding it to him. Drink slowly. If it's not enough, there's still more. In these two lives, he originally wanted to be a good person. He did not manage it in the other life. In this life, when he looked back and asked himself, he felt sad and didn't quite know how to make up for it. He suffered day and night, but still did not get a result. If he told others that he also had the dream of easing up the sufferings of the world, who would believe him? He would only get jeers, abuse and ridicule. Because he was Mo Wiiu, he was Taxi and Jun. He had killed people, so no matter what he did to make up for it, it would be useless. He was in the wrong. No one could forgive him. Perhaps only with this flame, only once his spiritual core was shattered, only when he sacrificed himself and walked the path that Chu Wanning took in the other life, could he find the slightest bit of comfort. Only then could he carefully say, if possible, I also want to be like Chu Wanning. I beg you, when you hear this wish, don't laugh at me. Don't despise me. I am very stupid, and for a long time, I had no one beside me. In my two lifetimes, I've walked the wrong path for twenty years. I don't know why I walked into that endless darkness. I don't know why things turned out this way. Looking back, it was all wrong. I can't find my mother. I can't find Shizun either. I beg you, hell is too cold. Let me go back, please. I want to go home. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 265. Tianyan Pavilion. Tu Shime. The candle burned out, leaving behind only darkness. The fire was extinguished, leaving behind only embers. However, the darkness was once bright and the embers were once warm. He also had his days of light and warmth. At this moment, no one knew about it and it would never be mentioned again. Mo Ran had used up every last bit of his spiritual power. He watched as the sparrows dispersed and the dead soldiers sank back to the ground. He watched as the living was no longer being controlled as the Zhenlong chess pieces cracked. He watched as the black tide that was about to engulf Shi Sheng Peak receded in a daze. He watched as the hellish calamity ended. Everyone said that he was unforgivable evil and he also felt that way. However, this demon finally did the exact same thing as the heavenly god. Chu Wanning was his candle and he went behind that light, blindly following it. Tang Ji Ran air. He vaguely heard someone calling him. He saw Xue Meng stumbling towards him from the corner of his eye. He saw Xue Zhenyang and Madame Wang breaking out of the encirclement and running towards him. He was comforted by their call. He grinned as if he wanted to laugh, but tears rolled down his blood-stained face. He wanted to say, I'm sorry. It's my fault. However, his throat was choked. In the end, he begged, don't hate me. I'm really. I really like you all. I like uncle and auntie. I like Shi Sheng Peak. 
I like this stolen warmth and this family. Uncle, Auntie, Shui Meng. Don't hate me. The millions of soldiers retreated. Mo Ran fell heavily to the ground, his body covered in mud and dust. In the other life, when Chu Wanning was seriously injured and lay unconscious, his white clothes were stained with blood but he still looked very clean. He was different from Mo Ran. Mo Ran had always been dirty. When he lost consciousness, he felt Madame Wang reach out and hug him. Her soft and warm arms were calling him with heartache, ran air. He heard Xue Zhenyang and Mu Yanli arguing. He was shouting angrily, evil plan? What evil plan could it be? If he was controlling those Zhenlong chess pieces, why would he do something like this to stop them? He heard Xue Meng shouting, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't take him away. Chaos ensued. Mo Ran wanted to explain more, but he was really too tired, too exhausted. He closed his eyes. Mount Xiao. Inside the Hall of Sages, the everlasting lamp emitted a faint light. The wax torches made from whale oil were as thick as the mouth of a bowl. There was no sign of the sun or the moon here. Only the flickering light of the lanterns flowed down, forming lingering candlelight tears, indicating the passage of time. Shi Mei was draped in a white fox fur brocade robe and sat on the high seat. He supported his forehead with his hand and closed his eyes to rest. This seat was originally occupied by Su Xuanglin. Back then, he watched as Su Xuanglin crafted the Zhenlong chess pieces, creating the Heaven and Hell showcase, hoping that his Shi Zun could return to the human world. At that time, he felt that this person was very interesting but unfortunately he couldn't keep him. In front of him, there was a piece of silk cloth with illusions. On it, dragons and snakes were dancing, densely packed with small dots of various colors. This was the sand table created by Taxi and Jun in the other life in connection with the Zhenlong chess formation. The black dots were Zhenlong black chess pieces, the silver dots were white chess pieces and the red dots were abandoned chess pieces that had died in battle. The small squares on the silk cloth represented the opposing forces. As long as he had the sand table in hand, he could clearly see the situation of the battle even if he was thousands of miles away. She may put the silk cloth in front of the table, but he didn't look at it carefully. He knew very well what choice Mo Ran would make in the end. He put the cloth there just for fun. Taxi and Jun had countless ways to get out of this predicament but Grandmaster Mo only had one option to go, so there was nothing to see. After a long time, the door of the hall suddenly opened and light footsteps sounded in the hall. Shi Mei didn't look up but asked lightly, you're here. A man stood on top of a shiny brick. The man who walked in was wearing a white cloak and the brim of his hat was very low, so his face could not be seen clearly. He stopped in the middle of the hall, his posture like a lotus. The man opened his mouth, his voice was elegant but his tone was low, just now, there was a movement outside, Mo Ran destroyed all of Taxi and Jun's chess pieces. Shi Mei didn't even bat an eyelash and said indifferently, yes, he didn't have a choice. The man continued. Taxi and Jun's body is already on the verge of collapse. So, the chess pieces under his control have already begun to devour you. Now that Mo Ran had sacrificed his spiritual core to break them, you have been freed from them which is a good thing. Shi Mei smiled, Oh? Are you worried about me? The man didn't answer. After a while, he asked, What do you plan to do next? Just follow the original plan. Shi Mei finally moved. He stretched his waist and opened his peach blossom eyes. With a smile, the entire room was filled with spring. Didn't I tell you long ago? I know you've thought it through carefully but you have to think clearly. Mo Ran paid such a heavy price to stop those Zhenlong chess pieces from wreaking havoc. Not all cultivators of these sects are idiots who wouldn't have doubts about the whole thing. Shi Mei smiled, I know what you mean. In order to protect the cultivation world from a great disaster, he didn't hesitate to shatter his own spiritual core. He's a hero. 
Do you think the cultivation world will persecute their own hero? Shi Mei didn't answer directly, but he was still smiling, his fingers crossed under his chin and gently asked the man, what Mo Ran did, isn't it similar to what Chu Wanning did in the other life? The man was silent for a while, then said. Yes. It's almost a reenactment. Right. Then let me ask you again. In the other life, when Chu Wanning was detained by Taxi and Jun, how many people in the cultivation world really cared about him and remembered him? Seeing that he didn't answer, the smile on Shi Mei's face became more enigmatic, almost none, right? I've already told you. In those years, when Shui Meng was running around asking aid from everywhere, at first, there were people who were sympathetic and promised that they would help him go to Shi Sheng Peak and rescue his Shi Zun. But what happened later? Under the influence of Taxi and Jun, those promises were just empty words. And as time passed, the sympathetic feelings disappeared and people started to find Shui Meng more and more annoying. When he went back to them for their promised help, he was told that Chu Wanning had been in the palace for so long, he might have already died. How could they sacrifice other people's lives for someone whose life or death was unknown? The mysterious man shook his head, at that time, Chu Wanning's condition was unknown but Mo Ran was with them. Even if they were heartless, they probably wouldn't hurt someone who had just shed blood for the sake of the cultivation world. Hearing his rebuttal, Shi Mei couldn't help but sigh, Ah, compared to me, you're still a few years younger so you're still too naive. As he said that, he put away the silk cloth on the table. The chess pieces on the table had all turned red, which meant that they were all lost and could no longer be used. He didn't care at all and put the silk back into the kinkin bag. When people don't have their own interests involved, they can be very noble. But once they are hurt themselves, they'll gradually reveal their bestial nature. Tying a knot on the kinkin bag with his slender fingers, Shi Mei raised his head and said, Now, in their eyes, there's a 50% chance that Mo Ran is a good person who was wrongly accused but there's also a 50% chance that he's a scheming villain. It's a pity to hurt a good person by mistake but letting a bad person go could lead to a bloody storm in the cultivation world. Seeing that the other party was listening in silence, Shi Mei continued, Therefore, even if he sacrificed his spiritual core to save the cultivation world from a great disaster, many would still be doubtful about him. Human are suspicious by nature. If there was something that could harm them, they would choose to eliminate it completely. This small variable won't change the final result. The mysterious man asked, So, you think that Tianyan Pavilion can still capture Mo Ran without any problems? Shi Mei smiled, The Tianyan Pavilion is on our side, so everything is going according to plan. This is inevitable. Now, as long as we can find a way to get Mo Ran's spiritual core fragments, I'll be able to put Taxi and Jun in order again. With his power, there's nothing that can't be done. The man didn't reply immediately. After a while, he said, but in the other world, you've been controlling him for nearly ten years. What have you accomplished? Shi Mei was slightly startled, as if he was stung by the man's questioning tone. His face slowly darkened and after a while, he narrowed his eyes and asked, What do you mean? Are you doubting me? No, I'm not doubting you. The man sighed, you and I have the same original intentions. In this world, there's no one who understands you more than I do. Shi Mei's cold expression softened a little but his beautiful eyes were still fixed on the man's face, as if he was examining how much of the man's words were true and how much of them were false. Finally, he pursed his thin lips and said, it's good that you understand. Every step I take is to get back what we deserve so some sacrifices are unavoidable. Yes. You're right, there's no one who understands me more than you. She may said softly, in these two lives, I have lived in constant fear and trepidation. Apart from you, there's almost no one I can trust. Don't let me down. She may's voice fell, like a butterfly circling in the air. After a complicated silence, 
the mysterious man opened his mouth. His tone was calm as he said, During this time, I've always wanted to ask you something. What is it? Outside Mount Chiao, dark clouds covered the sky. The wind rose and the vegetation was bleak as it swayed back and forth. It was as if countless people had been displaced and were wailing in grief. The sound of the wind. The man said, I really want to know. In the other life, how much sacrifice did you make for our sake? Tell me the truth. Shi Mei didn't expect him to suddenly ask such a question. His brows furrowed and his eyes lit up, didn't I already tell you? It's normal that some innocent people will die. If you think about the trampling we've suffered in the past, then. How much is some? The man's gentle and firm voice interrupted Shi Mei's sentence. She may seem to have lost his voice for a moment. His face began to clearly become gloomy. This was very unusual, because she may had always been a person who didn't express his emotions easily. But in front of this mysterious man, he didn't seem to care about baring his fangs and brandishing his claws. It was as if this man couldn't see the murderous look on his face at this moment. Some is some. Don't tell me that I have to register all the innocent people who died and give them to you for your review. The man smiled faintly and he said softly, it's not as if I could see it anymore, as you know. I've been very cooperative with you. Ever since you came to find me and told me all about the other life, I've been helping you for so many years. While you hid in Gaiyu Ye sect, I did everything that you've asked me to do at Qi Sheng Peak. The man said, although there are some things that I don't understand, and occasionally have some doubts, but your way of thinking is my way of thinking, and your pursuit is my pursuit. For the thing that we have in common, I have already disregarded life and death. I always thought that you were the same, so I don't mind sacrificing myself, as long as we can succeed. She may suddenly stood up, and paced back and forth. What do you mean by saying this? You disregarded life and death. Do you mean that say that I'm just living an ignoble life? He flicked his sleeves and looked back, staring at the man in white with a frosty expression. If you know what kind of person I am, you shouldn't say such things. I know. The mysterious man said, but I'm thinking that after you faked your death in the other life, you hid behind the scenes as Hua Binan and controlled the curse in Moran's heart for ten years. Eight years. Shi Mei interrupted him, later, Chu Wanning split his soul into two and put it into his body, which more or less restore his original personality. Eight years later, he committed suicide. So, not ten years. Fine, eight years. The man said, in these eight years, you magnified the hatred in his heart, causing him to commit all kinds of heinous atrocities, but he was getting further and further away from our original intention. When you saw him like this, why didn't you stop him in time? Shi Mei was so angry that he laughed, do you know how difficult it is to cultivate an eight sufferings and everlasting hatred flower? I know. Do you know that once a person who was poisoned by the demon flower was cured, it won't take effect a second time? I know. Shi Mei stopped laughing, and his eyes flashed with anger, then why are you still asking? If it were you, what would you have done? The man was silent and after a long time, he only sighed, haven't you already made the choice for me? Shi Mei was suddenly at a loss for words. The man said, I haven't done a thing for my own self. I walked the path you walked, so if I find myself in similar situation, I would most probably make the same decision, but I... She may narrowed his eyes, walked down the long stairs step by step and stopped in front of the man, but you. But I still felt guilty. Dead silence. Suddenly, she may grab the man's robe. Such a beautiful hand, wearing a snake patterned ring, an extremely elegant hand tightly grasped the person in front of him, the veins on the back of his hand bulging. He gritted his teeth and said, what conscience? What's the difference between you and me? Events had already happened one after another. Which one of them wasn't planned by the two of us? 
Didn't you understand very well then? Weren't you very vicious and merciless? Now you have a guilty conscience. Why? Because you think that Su Xuanglin saw you as a friend but you have been deceiving him, taught him the fake rebirth technique and letting him open the gate of time and space, life and death for us. Are you ashamed of that? The man said softly, he didn't betray me until he died. Shi Mei was stunned for a moment and his eyes flashed with tiredness and grief, good, good I was wondering why you were so unwilling at that time what else? You saw thousands of chess pieces, and you felt heartache for those people and you blamed yourself? The man was very calm, don't you feel any guilt in your heart? You. Shi Mei gritted his teeth, and his eyes were almost mad and mocking. He stared at the person in front of him for a long time as if he was looking at a big joke, or as if he was looking at a traitor who made him feel cold. Suddenly, he seemed to think of a very vicious word. He sneered, extend his poisonous claws and stabbed into the man's blood. Good, very good. You said so many beautiful words. Self-reproach, shame, but in the end you're just being melancholic, right? Looking at the confusion between the man's eyebrows, the light in Shi Mei's eyes became brighter. He was like a vulture hunting for prey, soaring and circling, waiting for the moment the prey breathed its last before swooping down to kill. You're suddenly questioning me. You probably think that you're regretting it because you saw the Zhenlong chess pieces. You probably felt that when you saw Su Xuanglin's death, you were moved. But I know you. I know what kind of person you are. Self-reproach and shame don't exist within you. You are as cold-blooded and fickle as I am. The vulture's wings cast a shadow of death and it became colder and colder as it went down. You are not repenting at all. Don't lie to yourself. He laughed haughtily but gracefully. Shi Ming Jing, who could grasp people's weakness was always elegant and calm. He paused after every point. In my opinion, you are just lamenting the loss of your eyes. When he finished speaking, Shi Mei pulled out a dagger from his waist. Slowly, he used the handle of the dagger to lift the hood of the man's low-hanging white cloak. Little by little, he suddenly took it off. The cloak fell and behind the white velvet hood was a beautiful face. Peerless appearance, elegant features. The two of them actually had the same face. Only this cloaked Chi Mei's eyes were covered by a snow-white bandage, and a few strands of hair fell in front of the bandage. Chi Mei looked at the man whose cloak was lifted and sneered, Chi Ming Jing, look at yourself clearly. What you are lamenting is that you sacrificed more than me. That day on Mount Chiao, the situation was extremely bad. In order to affect Chu Wanning's feelings, we had to use the last move we discussed. There were so many people watching, we naturally had to act accordingly. So, in the end, you lost your eyes but I was fine. You were just being petty. If I was going to be petty, I wouldn't have agreed to your plan from the beginning. I wouldn't have made the worst decision to sacrifice myself. In fact, for me, as long as either one of us is alive to finish that unfinished business, I would. Before he finished speaking, he was interrupted. Who's there? The dagger was thrown out and accurately hit the beam. Shi Mei looked back and coldly said, Come out. Huang Xiaoyu weakly came out from behind the pillar with disheveled hair. That day, he betrayed everyone and searched for the treasures on Mount Jiao but because he triggered a mechanism, his group was trapped in the treasure room and couldn't get out. In the treasure room of the Rufeng sect, there were gold, silver, precious weapons, sword manuals, and secret scrolls. The only thing missing was food. Zhang Dongtang's group was trapped inside. Martial brothers and sisters killed each other, the strong bullied the weak and these people ate each other to survive. In the end, only Huang Xiaoyu was left. After eating the remaining disciple, he struggled to get out of the treasure room, but he didn't expect to encounter such a strange situation. What did he see? Tu Shi Ming Jing? Huang Xiaoyu couldn't figure it out. He couldn't understand. With his brain, 
At most he could guess that they were twins. He would never realize that they were two Shimei's in the same world because of the gate of time and space, life and death. But the more he listened, the more he found the whole thing strange. Huang Xiaoyu was a wily old fox. He vaguely felt that something was amiss and wanted to leave first. Who would have thought that Shimei's eyes and ears were sharp enough to discover his existence? Shimei narrowed his eyes. I was wondering who it was. Turns out it was an old rat. His line of sight moved down and fell on Huang Xiaoyu's robe. Blood. There are no animals on Mount Jiao Mountain. Whose blood was that? He was silent for a moment, as if he had figured it out. His lips opened and closed, unexpectedly showing disdain. Human blood. Huang Xiaoyu felt the killing intent and ran away. Where do you think you're going? Shi Mei's green robe fluttered as he moved, his body was as light as a kite. He stood firmly in front of Huang Xiaoyu and raised his misty eyes. Unfortunately, his eyes were so cold that the mist in his eyes froze into ice. Old man. You probably don't know but the most disgusting thing I find the most is cannibalism. These were the last words Huang Xiaoyu heard. The hall was filled with a strong smell of blood. Shi Mei looked at Huang Xiaoyu lying on the ground with blood flowing out of the hole in his chest. He frowned in disgust. He wiped the blood on his hands and said, Disgusting thing. He turned his head and stared at the other Shi Mei for a moment. Then his tone softened. It's been two lifetimes. There are many beasts like Huang Xiaoyu in the world. Do you see? So. The cards of the cultivation world would have to be reshuffled. Also, don't think too much. I told you that I wouldn't let your sacrifice be in vain. When this is over, I'll find a way to cure your eyes. Seeing that the cloaked Chi Mei still didn't say anything, he rolled his eyes and said indifferently, Don't be stubborn. Forget it. I promise you, unless I have no other choice, I won't implicate the innocent. So, you can be rest assured? Satisfied. Hearing this, the white-clothed Shi Mei's tense back slowly relaxed. His lips opened and closed, as if he wanted to say something to his other self. However, after this disturbance, the other Shi Mei from the other life was in a bad mood and didn't intend to listen to him anymore. He had already walked out of the main hall. End chapter.